Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, which many people find inspiring and motivating and helps you keep the right mindset in dealing with life's challenges. My special guest today is a first time candidate for Senate in District 25. She is Christina Kim Marshall. And today we are going beyond politics. Hey, Christina, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Welcome, aloha. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor and a pleasure to be on your show this morning. Christina, tell me a bit about your background growing up. Yeah, sure. Um, my family has been in Hawaii since the, 19, the 1960s. Um, my my um, excuse me, uh, grandmother on my mom's side is from South Korea, and my grandfather was a contractor in Korea during uh, the Korean War, and he met her there, and he was also a pilot, so growing up, my mom uh, would go to uh, Japan on an airplane to get a doll, and even when they moved to um, Hawaii when she was about six years old, he used to fly um, outer islands, and um, you know, that was really fun for my mom. Um, and my dad, um, he grew up in uh, Northern California, and he moved here when he was a teenager, um, but his uh, grandfather was a big contractor in San Francisco and built um, homes for celebrities and laid some of the original sidewalks down in San Francisco. And my grandfather's sister, uh, my great aunt was friends with Walt Disney. So, you know, sometimes we would go to her house in Newport Beach during Christmas and just watch the boats. And, um, you know, family was always a, a big thing for me. Um, growing up. And um, in Hawaii, I went to um, Kaimuki and Kaiser High School. So I'm a public school graduate. I also went to the Scheidler College of Business and studied uh, economics and international business. I was also recruited by the CIA in college, but I chose to stay at home and serve my community here. Wow. And Christina, Walt Disney, that must, that's a great friend to have. And <laughs> yeah, and well, you know, as a kid, you don't know any different, but, um, you know, if uh, you have, you know, certain connections, you know, you just, you know, love your family and have fun. But my dad, he used to be able to go to Disneyland whenever he wanted because of his um, aunt was friends with him. <laughs> so Christina, you have a beautiful family, you know, and you have Thank a sister you. and, Tell me about how your parents met. Oh, sure. Thank you. Well, um, it's interesting. Um, they met um, when they were around 20. They were disco dancing with their friends at the Sheraton Waikiki. Apparently, my dad says that my mom was quite a disco dancer, which uh, really surprised me. Uh, but, you know, they had a lot of uh, fun, you know, when they were dating before they had me and my sisters. Oh, that's that's interesting to hear. I like hearing that. And and Christina, um, I know that you participated in a in a pageant before. Tell me about what pageant it was and what did you learn from that experience? Yes, thank you. Well, when I came back um, from Japan, where I studied abroad, I um, was introduced to some pageant directors, and I never thought I would uh, compete in a pageant. I was pretty shy, uh, but I competed in the Miss Universe system and the Miss America system. Um, oh, there I'm pictured um, as a Miss Oahu. And I had the platform of, because community and public service is very important to um, the pageant systems. And, you know, it, it gives depth to the, to the candidates. And you know, it shows that we care about our community. And my platform was helping homeless families uh, with children. And I would volunteer uh, at ho the homeless shelters and in the tent communities, bring food and clothes. And you know, I would go in groups, um, and we would you know play with the kids, talk with the families. And I've spent Christmases at the Next Step Homeless Shelter, uh, making dinner for the homeless families, bringing wrapped toys for the children. Um, and it's 
always been a, a passion for me to serve others. I, I know that you do a ton of volunteer work and that's very impressive, Christina. And I wanna ask you, you know, you're a first time candidate for Senate District 25. Yes. What's, what's the reasons, what compelled you to wanna run for office? Yes, thank you. It's a great question that I get asked um, quite frequently because it is, it's like jumping off a cliff going um, after a, uh, an elected office, especially if you've never run before. It's a, it's, it's a big task. Um, and I feel so honored to have this opportunity because I'm learning and growing so much. But I really decided to take this leap of faith and jump off the cliff to run for office because I saw a need. Um, I've been seeing that all the major issues in our community, the homelessness, the cost of living, the public schools, the lack of affordable housing, they've all been getting greater and not worse. And in fact, before COVID, um, where we were um, second, we had the second highest homeless rate per capita in the nation after New York. Um, our, our schools, our public school system gets the top third funding in the nation, but we have the bottom um, test scores and quality as far as the rankings. We're ranked about 45th in the nation. And um, our cost of living is, is extremely high. Our cost of goods is about 30%. Oh no, yeah, 30% higher than the national average. Our electricity is about 300% higher than the national average. And there's just a, a big lack of affordable housing as well. And there's so many promises of these new projects um, like condos in town that promised affordable housing. But when we look at the details, it's not really affordable housing. Um, you know, it's, it's more of a facade. So I really think we need to um, be responsible with the issues at hand and tackle those and not be distracted. Like I feel that our government has been very distracted by side projects and not focused on the main issues that our community is concerned about. Well, Christina, you know, a lot of people tend to, you know, talk and complain about problems yeah. and stuff and, and you're, you're trying to create action. I mean, yes. I like that. It's very impressive that you want to do something about it. You want to try to improve Hawaii. Yes. Um, tell me, and I know you have a lot of supporters and tell me about how the campaign experience is uh, going for you so far. Yes, thank you, Rusty. I'm so grateful for each and every one of my supporters and every um, hour and minute they give me of their time and encouragement um, because campaigning is a 24-7 task. Ever since I filed my papers in May, that's been my life. I, I think, live and breathe campaign life and um, my supporters have been um, kind of like the lifeblood of my campaign. They, they're what uh, keeps me going and they inspire me and um, they help me so much. Um, and yeah, they give me whatever extra time they can and their skills. You know, every individual has unique skills and abilities and um, you really learn to value everybody for their strengths when you're running a campaign because um, that's where you get the most help when people can offer uh, what their their strong their strengths are. Well, Christina, that's very impressive. I mean, it, campaigning is tough work, and and I know that there was a parade for you. Can you tell me about that? Oh yes. So uh, one of my uh, ca campaign members, she's a retired teacher, and she's. Um, been a campaign manager in the past about 10 years ago but she was she told me a couple weeks so christina you see all these convoys and parades around the island for different causes you need to have one for your campaign i was like okay that sounds like a lot of work to coordinate but i think that would be a great idea so i was calling and texting and finding people oh, there's me in the convertible people that be interested in um, helping with this. I thought it'd be so fun and a great way to be in front of the, the voters and the residents in my community because we can't really go door to door right now because of COVID, unfortunately. So campaigning uh, this year is unprecedented because we can't meet everybody face to face. Um, but 
yeah, during that uh, parade, I wanted um, one convertible to sit in the back. So it'd be easy for, you know, people on the side of the road or in their cars to see me and I'd be able to connect and wave with them. And then I ended up getting three convertibles. So, you know, that was really um, nice that, you know, um, I got what I wanted <laughs> and it was a lot of fun. We drove, um, we started in Enchanted Lakes and then we um, drove all around Keolu Loop. Then we drove in Kailua around Lani Kai, um, uh, down to uh, Kalaheo High School and through Kailua Town. We drove through Mount Awili. Then we drove all the way through Waimanalo. Then we drove um, to Hawaii Kai and then we drove through the shopping areas in Hawaii Kai as well. And then we came back to Waimanalo, but we drove through um, Sandy Beach first. And, you know, there is a lot of, you know, really encouraging, happy, um, energetic people along the way. And we were out for, I think, two and a half hours in the, the midday sun. So it was great. I, I enjoyed it so much. <laughs> Nothing wrong with having three convertibles, that's for sure. And Christina, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you know, my, you definitely go beyond the lines. You know, my books, I talk about uh, making an impact, you know, having the power of choice, but also leadership. Uh, what do you, yeah. what do you feel the best leaders do, Christina? I feel, yeah, I just want to mention, I think that's so amazing that you're author of uh, multiple books and that you're so inspirational and you're a great leader. I think that a great leader um, shows respect to others, treats everyone equally uh, and listens to people. I think, um, a good leader um, is a good team player and they make everyone feel valuable and special. And the first of all, a good leader needs to be able to lead themselves. So if they can, you know, take care of their self and handle their self in a respectable manner, you know, that will, you know, go down to the rest of the team. But a good leader, I believe, is a good team player. I like hearing those answers there, Christina. And let's get into some of the issues that's uh, important to you and our community. What are your thoughts about rail? Sure. Well, I've uh, spoken to someone who knows a lot about uh, engineering and the rail. Um, he's a professor at UH. He's an engineer originally from Athens and he has shared to extent um, that rail is not a good idea for Hawaii and I feel the same way. Uh, we've already spent 9.6 billion dollars on the rail. It was supposed to be 1 billion, then I think it was 3 billion, then it was 4 billion. Now we're at 9.6 billion. Um, they want more and more money <laughs> to go to Ala Moana. Um, but I don't think it's really going to bring the solution that people want, which is to reduce traffic because people think, uh, well, maybe other people will write it, but no one I know say, are saying they're going to write it. <laughs> Plus, um, the rail needs 100,000 riders per day to break even an operating cost. Otherwise, they're going to have to subsidize the operating costs with taxpayer money. Um, so also to maximize the ridership in the rail, they've decided to take out all the seats. So there's no seats in the rail, which you know wouldn't make sense for a mom with children or elderly to ride. Um, as far as I know, they still have no plans of installing restrooms at the rail stations, which doesn't make sense either. Um, and going, I believe, that if anything, we need to stop it at Middle Street because at least there we have, you know, the main uh, bus uh, bus station, the bus depot, so people can get, you know, to Ala Moana or to Waikiki on these express buses from um, Middle Street because we have the big uh, uh, transit system there. Um, but if we go to Ala Moana, it's really going to be a nightmare for so many reasons. And if the rail went um, 
double over budget through the cornfields on the west side. It's going to be three or four times over budget through the urban core of Honolulu because we're going to be messing with um, and having to dig up the lava rock foundations of all these high rises, the electrical lines, uh, sewer lines, all of that. Plus, we saw what happened when the rail was doing construction through um, the Pearl City, Pearl Ridge area, all these businesses were really suffering, losing business left and right. And, you know, they were going um, after the state to get more money, their loss, their lost income. Um, so I don't think that that is a good solution. No, I like hearing your insights. And, you know, I was thinking about it too. And I was, I was just thinking that maybe the rail should end at Aala Park, because at least you you get to the edge of downtown and then from there mm. you can, you know, take the bus or whatever, but man, it's the increase in cost is, is crazy. And I want to ask you this, Christina, what are your ideas to revive our economy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Well, I think that first and foremost, we need to be responsible with the funds that we have. We need accountability and we need to, uh, you know, sit down, look at the budget, and we also need to find all of uh, the missing um, monies in like slush funds um, that are kind of like black holes because there's a lot of special funds people don't know at the Capitol where exactly the money is. Um, plus, I feel like our um, politicians have just been spending money left and right like it grows on trees. And um, you know, I, I don't want to say, well, you know, they they may maybe think that because, you know, a lot of, of our politicians, you know, have gone to private school and Ivy League colleges and nothing, nothing wrong with that. But I think that, you know, someone made this analogy, like if we have the money, you know, to only go to McDonald's or, you know, go make spaghetti for dinner, but we're going to buy, we're going to Ruth's Chris for dinner because, you know, that's what we want. You know, that's not being um, responsible or frugal with you know our money or living within our means um, and then it also goes to you know investing in like the rail 9.6 billion dollars already when you know we're short um, on licensed mental health professionals so um, you know like my opponent's solution to that is oh we're short on licensed mental health professionals so we should just re release these um, criminals that have committed um, felonies onto the street um, because we don't have enough, you know, <laughs> mental health professionals to take care of them, um, things like that. And, you know, with this, the public schools and, you know, all the homeless issues, um, I mean, it's insurmountable. We need to focus, laser focus on what's important. Um, and also, I think that we have a lot of room to grow for uh, technology. I was speaking with one of my economics professors um, who's been uh, teaching economics in Hawaii since um, 1975. And he was talking about how Hawaii has tried to diversify their economy uh, through agriculture. Um, but because of economies of scale and how much it costs to export, um, you know, we've had limited success with uh, macadamia nuts, uh, cocoa, cacao, chocolate, um, and coffee. Um, you know, I think it's great and important for us to increase our food security through agriculture uh, because we import 90% of our food. And at one point, uh, the Hawaiian Islands um, was self-sustaining um, in their food. Um, and they had just about as many um, residents as we do now. But we need to, you know, think outside of the box. We need to be innovative. And, you know, I love your show's name, Think Tech Hawaii. Like, we need to keep our talent here. And we also need to create more talent. And I feel like, you know, where I know knowledge is power. And knowing that our public school system is ranked 45th in the nation in terms of test scores and quality and uh, UH data shows that about 70% of the public school graduates in Hawaii need remediation in math, English, science when they go into the University of Hawaii schools. That shows me that we're not preparing our local kids for college, not even the local university, let alone trying to go to a mainland university that most of them are um, harder to get in. 
Um, so we need to we need to encourage creativity and innovation in our local people and you know give them the freedom to create and um, to grow our economy because that's what it takes. It takes a smart, intelligent, brave, uh, creative people to grow our economy. And uh, I think that's what we need. And, you know, I'm, you know, like Rick Blangiardi has said, and I admire him on his interview that it's not all about me. Like I have a team of people um, that are very intelligent and creative and innovative um, around me to help me create ideas and brainstorm and support me while I'm in office. And I have uh, good friends who are doctors, nurses, very successful business owners in Hawaii, um, yeah, economists, just all kinds of people who are just wonderful. And of course, you know, family people, so, and people that help the homeless too. So it's just a wide variety of people that I have um, as well pouring into me um, that I, I know that, you know, we can work together as a team to uh, make Hawaii and our community a better, um, healthier, thriving place. Christina, I like hearing those, uh, those uh, ideas from you. And I want to ask you this, what's a big adversity that you dealt with in your life that you had to overcome? Sure. Um, definitely my parents' divorce was a big adversity that I had to overcome as it probably is with uh, most uh, young children, but the family is a place where a, a child gets their identity, feels stable and secure, and is able to grow and thrive in. And when that uh, foundation, I want to say, is disrupted, then a child's internal kind of um, radar and identity are, are thrown off kilter. And just having to, you know, find out who I am and be stable and secure uh, and confident in who I am as an individual um, was definitely a struggle, um, you know, after the divorce, because you question, you know, what's true, you know, who can you trust, what's right and wrong, You're like, am I safe, you know, what could happen next, so you get anxiety from that too. Um, so yeah, I just, I can't emphasize enough how important I think the family unit is and just, you know, it's like a team and uh, just encouraging each other. And I know some people, you know, maybe they don't have strong families, but they find, you know, like Hanai families, Hanai, um, sisters, Hanai aunts, Hanai moms, and, you know, and they get that support system and they have that security, um, to be themselves and, and thrive. So Christina, looking back on your short life so far, <laughs> what, what's a valuable lesson you learned? Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, that's a great question. I think that, I, I think that over and over I see, and as I mentioned before, what um, I think is important um, to, to uh, be a good leader is to be a good team player. And I think that a valuable lesson that keeps coming up for, for me is um, teamwork and community um, and how, it, how important it is to um, not only surround yourself with the right people who believe in you and build you up, but to also be able to pour into others and to be a part of the community and care about your whole community and the issues in your community and um, I mean, the homeless, uh, the kids that are coming from broken families that go to, you know, um, Boys and Girls Club, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, there's so many needs, but just being a part of the community and, and just understanding people and accepting them where they're at is huge because we don't know what other people have been through and we need to be able to um, lift, each, lift each other up and yeah, not take things personally. You know, some people will that have been through a lot of pain lash out at you, but you know, getting defensive and attacking them is not gonna be the solution. We need to like care for each other and find the solutions to the problems. 
um, yeah, attacking and complaining and gossiping and being negative, you know, that might feel a little relief for the moment to vent, but that's not solution based. That's not going to change the problem. It's, you know, just going to make you more upset. So I think a positive attitude and just being part of the solution, as you said, is really, really important because, yeah, I hear so many people's frustrations about the community, about the politicians, um, but who's really willing to step up and do something, invest time and, you know, put um, the walk to their talk. Um, it's much, it's a much smaller percentage than I would have thought originally. <laughs> No, and Christina, you know what I always say is decisions must be based on reason, not emotion, you know, just mm -hmm. to kind of follow up on what you were talking about there. Mm -hmm. and I want to ask you, Christina, who's a leader that you admire? Uh -huh. Yes, thank you. Well, my, my grandmother on my dad's side, I would say she was a very strong woman. She passed away at 93. Um, in 2017 uh, when she turned she grew up in uh, South Dakota where the, <laughs> they, they have the famous corn palace and the palace is actually made out of corn they have Mount Rushmore but when she turned 18 she moved to Washington DC to meet her older sister who was already there they ran an office there during World War II and uh, apparently her and her sister knew the, the ins and outs of running that office and they did real, a really, really amazing job. And then she moved to Northern California where she met my grandfather and she worked really hard um, being a homemaker. And uh, she was always a strong woman who didn't complain about anything, but she just did it. And um, even when my grandfather passed away, she helped um, with me and my sisters, and uh, she was a, a leader, um, not only in our family, but in the community. People talk about how they looked up to her like a second mother after their mothers passed away, and she would even take me to um, polit local political rallies when I was uh, in college and my early career years, um, and I'd have fun with her and her friends, but I think she is some of the in inspiration why I slowly <laughs> got into politics. Well, that's good to hear, Christina. I always say that parents are leaders, and I like that you mentioned your grandmother. I want to thank you, Christina, for you know taking time to be on the show today so people can get to know you. I mean, you have a lot of great, fresh ideas, and I wish you the best on your Senate uh, run uh, very shortly. Thank you. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKamori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Christina and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. <laughs>